Design trends are a reflection of society and the events occurring in our world. After being stuck inside for a year and a half, we use digital tools and connect with each other virtually more than ever. Augmented reality and the metaverse is the next logical step in that digital interaction. The implications of this technology are exciting and terrifying. Regardless of whether you think this tech is good or bad, it will have a major impact on design and culture. Augmented reality, or AR, is a technology that superimposes a computer-generated image on a user's view of the real world. This can be done through a headset, a pair of glasses, a holographic display, or even with your phone. I think if I were to sum up the benefits of AR in one word, it would be context. Whether it's a digital overlay while performing spinal surgery or digital fashion that looks expressive and cool, augmented reality has the power to provide additional context to situations and environments. So let's talk about the expressive part first. For pretty much all of recorded human history, we've used objects and clothing as a way to project an image or idea to ourselves and to others. These things communicate what we care about, our standing in society, and our personal background. They tell us everything we need to know about a person just through a cursory glance. Once again, they provide context about who we are. It's why those starter pack memes were so popular a few years ago. I'm not saying that it's right to judge people for their appearance, but we all do it anyway, at least subconsciously. And a lot of the time, people want to be perceived a certain way. One of the clearest examples of how people project who they are with the objects they buy is through their shoes. There are entire subcultures built around sneakers and shoes. Most people who buy the famous Air Jordans aren't getting them because they want to improve their basketball game. They're a status symbol in certain subcultures, or people just like the way they look. The bottom line is that people who buy Jordans aren't just buying basketball shoes. They want to associate themselves with one of the greatest athletes and strongest brands in the world, and they want other people to see that they value those things. Even if you buy purely functional shoes that are just simple and reliable and not flashy at all, that's still a conscious decision that tells others a lot about what you value. This need to express ourselves to others goes far beyond just shoes. It's a part of almost every purchasing decision we make, whether it's our car, our furniture, or our clothes. Hey, my snakeskin jacket! Thanks, baby! Did I ever tell you that this here jacket represents some of my individuality and my belief in personal freedom? So back to how this relates to augmented reality. I think AR is gonna be the next frontier in personal expression simply because of the flexibility that it allows for. Imagine if the pattern on your clothing could actually move. Some things might be wildly uncomfortable or impractical to wear or use as physical objects, but that's not really a problem with augmented reality. You could use completely impractical digital materials or do insanely intricate patterns, or wear a digital fur coat in the middle of summer, or have a chair made out of flower petals sitting in your living room. You could have an entire living room full of blank white furniture and overlay different kinds of patterns and textures on them every month. There's very little pollution or waste when creating digital objects. Fast fashion and the creation of disposable objects has been incredibly harmful for the environment, and this move towards more digital design changes that. There's no fabric, there's no need to ship boatloads of clothes across the ocean, only to be thrown away by customers a few months later when they go out of style. AR is the tool that will be used to overlay style on top of the physical world. And this isn't just a hypothesis either. Big companies are investing heavily in this space. Nike recently acquired Artifact, a company that makes virtual shoes. The idea of having an unlimited wardrobe with an unlimited number of colors and materials with almost no negative impact on the environment is a really powerful idea, and Nike clearly believes in it. It's also hard to talk about VR without mentioning the metaverse. In October 2021, Mark Zuckerberg said that Facebook's version of the metaverse is a virtual world where people can work, socialize, and play. I have no idea if Mark's vision for the metaverse will happen. While companies investing heavily in a space is definitely not a guarantee of its success, it certainly is an indicator of where things are going. On the note of big tech capitalizing on this trend, there are massive privacy concerns around how companies will use all the data they collect with augmented reality, but I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. There are also major opportunities for novel interactions as well. Meta is experimenting with turning a light on or off by simply looking at it while wearing a pair of AR glasses. Johns Hopkins is already using AR to aid in spinal surgery. I can think of a lot of examples where you might have a very simplified set of buttons or options in the 
physical world, but then you click a button and see an array of additional options to control objects. This will be huge in simplifying controls and interfaces for the objects in our everyday lives while providing context in an unobtrusive way. Physical product designers and industrial designers are uniquely positioned to tackle these problems because they're well equipped to deal with three-dimensional space. I personally have worked on a couple of AR projects in the last year or so, and I found the transition from physical to digital to be pretty seamless and also a lot of fun. I can't show any of this work right now, but I may be able to in the future, so be sure to subscribe so you're notified when I do actually disclose it. At first, the physical world will inform augmented reality trends. As users slowly begin to adopt the technology, they'll need to have interactions that are familiar to them. Apple famously did this with their original iPhone app icons. In order to make the technology accessible, they had to tie it to something that people already understood. They'd add depth and shading to the icons in order to make them more readable. This is called skeuomorphism, and it gives us the context we need to make sense of new technology. Gradually, the icons for the iPhone became more simple as users became more comfortable with using smartphones. I think the same will happen with AR. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that everything is going to be virtual. Until we somehow manage to escape our bodies and become spirits, we're always going to need at least some physical objects and tools in our everyday lives. Another obvious thing is that digital experiences are very temporary, they're just pixels. And I think that because of that, not as much value will be placed on them. A lot of things should be physical objects, things like family heirlooms or valuable artifacts, and more obviously tools and things that we use to interact with physical space. I mean, a virtual car isn't going to do you much good because you can't actually drive anywhere in real life with it. But a lot of things really don't need to be physical objects. AR will also be leveraged as a marketing tool. You could have hundreds of different types of store displays or packaging for different types of users. One person might see a display that's tailored to them, and another person might see something completely different. This would provide better context for different types of users. Now, I wanna be clear, this could be a really negative thing and isolating in a lot of ways, depending on your perspective, but I wanna focus on the positives until a little bit later in the video. I will talk about the negative aspects. The main thing to remember is that designing digital objects is very adaptable, it's flexible, it's fast, but creating physical objects is pretty slow, expensive, and inflexible, which leads me to my next point. Physical manufacturing is hard. Let's use this mini hand squirrel to discuss the nuances of manufacturing physical goods. So first, you need to make a mold for this guy. Mold making tooling costs will be thousands of dollars at a minimum, but sometimes it can get up to hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that doesn't even include the really, really expensive R&D costs associated with product development. Most of these kinds of products are made overseas and talking with stakeholders across several time zones and speaking different languages is basically a perfect recipe for miscommunication. So for example, you might have said you wanted the squirrel to be brown, but the first factory samples came back green. So now you have to wait another month for them to ship the next sample. It's also very hard to make changes to a physical product after you've launched it. If it turns out that the little finger holes for your squirrel are too small for 90% of people, you're probably out of luck unless you spend a bunch of money trying to make changes to the mold. And all of this is just to get a final piece ready for production. Once you go into production to make thousands of these, you have to deal with the nightmare of your factory partners trying to cut corners at every opportunity that they can. Maybe they'll try to use a cheaper material without telling you, and it causes many customers to have an allergic reaction when slipping the little squirrel onto their fingers. Luckily, you catch that in the early factory samples, and once you finally get a mini hand squirrel that you're proud to sell to customers, you have to ship them and distribute them. This is also not cheap, and it can often take weeks or months to receive your shipment. If there's a cyclone in the South China Sea while your hand squirrels are being exported, there's a very real possibility that the shipping container that has your precious cargo could fall off the deck of the ship and sink to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> A few months later, your precious hand squirrels will litter a small remote beach in Indonesia, forever ruining the pristine beauty of the landscape. Now, to be fair, most of the time this doesn't happen. I'm just trying to demonstrate how unpredictable physical product development can be. Assuming your hand squirrels do get successfully exported, if something is wrong with them or they don't sell very well, you'll end up with a warehouse full of them just collecting dust. One thing that's a guarantee is that these little hand squirrels will eventually end up in a landfill, just like most of the other non-recyclable products we make. 
And this is just the reality of creating physical products. It's slow, expensive, painstaking, and wasteful. This is just for a little squirrel toy. It gets exponentially more complex and more expensive when you start to make consumer electronics and other objects that have multiple parts. Most physical products are made up of several different components that all need to work together harmoniously. A lot of AR experiences could actually take many physical components out of the equation, which is interesting. So rather than having a physical keyboard with all of these discrete components, you can just type on a flat table. Now, I'm not saying that making digital objects is easy. It's still really hard, but it's a lot more flexible. I think that's the key thing. It's much simpler to roll out big changes with digital products. If something's wrong with it, you can fix it relatively quickly. If you launch a physical product and there's something wrong with it or customers don't like it, you're out of luck. Digital product design is also way easier to scale because you don't have to deal with the nightmarish logistics of global distribution. Okay, so I've spent a lot of time talking about what's good about augmented reality. I think it's safe to say that it's gonna be a major trend for the next couple of years. Let's talk about what's limiting about the technology, and then we can also talk about some things that are potentially really dangerous and scary about it. Meta posted this clip of Mark Zuckerberg surfing in the metaverse. Nothing in AR will ever come close to the real sensory experience of actual surfing. I understand that this is a VR experience, not an AR one, but the point still stands. I also think that there will be massive amounts of data being collected from all of this technology that we're constantly interacting with. The problem is that big tech companies don't exactly have a favorable track record when it comes to using that data for good. With shareholders breathing down these companies' necks all the time, expecting ruthless and unending quarterly growth, companies have to resort to more and more nefarious data practices over time. This is a much larger discussion that will eventually be its own video, but the main point I'm trying to make right now is that AR will collect a lot of sensitive data. I also think this technology could be super invasive. It's already distracting enough to have a smartphone vying for your attention during every moment of your life. Now imagine something much more powerful is directly in the way of your vision all the time. The potential for manipulation is pretty crazy. There's a guy named Keichi Matsuda who did an amazing video illustrating some of this, which you see here. I'll link his video in the description so you can watch it after you finish watching this. I mentioned earlier that you could show different things to different users based on their preferences. So basically, you could be sitting in a room and Emilio sees one thing and Juliana sees a completely different thing. This is pretty awesome in some ways, but it also could be incredibly divisive and isolating. If we all have completely different views of reality, it could make the rifts and divides between us even bigger. We've seen how social media echo chambers can lead to some pretty horrific results, but I think it could be taken a step further in the wrong direction with AR. The bottom line is that augmented reality and all of its potential use cases should be carefully considered. It makes me think of that quote from Jurassic Park, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. I really think that people have to speak out against companies behaving unjustly in this regard as it relates to AR, and designers should do everything in their power to steer their team in the right direction when it comes to the future of augmented reality. This technology has far-reaching implications for design and culture, which are really scary, but also really exciting. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It helps me out and it's totally free for you. I also have a course that focuses on the principles of industrial design. The link is in the description if you wanna learn more. Really, the last thing I wanna say is that as designers, it's really, really important to stay optimistic about the future. We have to guide the future in the right direction. Progress is going to happen no matter what, and it's our job to make sure that it's on the right track. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you for watching.